On the 29th of April 2021, at around 2 p.m. in the afternoon, the South African Police Service along with the Western Cape Anti-Gang Unit were involved in a high-speed car chase near the suburbs of Century City in the city of Cape Town. They were trying to stop two vehicles, a white Toyota Hilux and also a black Mercedes-Benz. Two of the individuals inside the vehicles were wanted men. They were suspected of orchestrating the murder of Detective Charles Kinnear, who was gunned down in front of his home. CCTV footage of the police chase shows the two vehicles which the suspects were traveling in being cornered by unmarked police cars next to a construction site. Construction workers are seen running away after spotting the police officers jump out holding machine guns and surrounding the vehicles. The officers then opened the front doors of the Toyota Hilux and placed 32-year-old Nafiz Madak, who was in the driver's seat, on the ground. Two other suspects who were traveling in the black Mercedes were also arrested by the police. During the arrest, the two vehicles were searched. Inside the Mercedes-Benz, two unlicensed guns were recovered. In the second vehicle, which was driven by Nafiz Madak, one other unlicensed firearm was found. And now to this developing story, alleged underworld boss Nafiz Modak and three others have been arrested in connection with the murder of top cop Charles Kinnear. Kinnear, an anti-gang detective, was gunned down outside his Bishop Lavers home in Cape Town in September last year. He was investigating gun running and gang activity at the time of his shooting. The murder of Detective Charles Kinnear occurred on the 18th of September 2020, eight months earlier. The Western Cape anti-gang unit member had just arrived home when a masked gunman shot him five times, hitting him in the upper body. Screenshots of the CCTV footage show the chilling moments before Lt. Kinnear was shot dead, as well as the shooting. The unknown hitman, wearing a red hoodie and black Adidas sweatpants, was caught by several CCTV cameras as he loitered the area. But at 15.02 pm, he was captured by Kinnear's own security cameras. 30 seconds later, the man can be seen next to Kinnear's car pointing a firearm at the detective. The identity and whereabouts of the man in the red hoodie is still unknown. However, it's alleged that police have since discovered the gun he used to assassinate Kinnear. It was a 9mm pistol, which had a serial number that was scratched off. The gun was located in a flat in Avonwood, an area about 9 minutes away from where the shooting took place. Shortly after his arrest, Nafiz Matak was detained at the Drakenstein Correctional Center, a low-security prison situated between Parle and Francehoek, within the Western Cape Province. He's a very good guy and he, we need people like him in our space, so whenever people like that is around, we must always look out for them. I don't think it's it's very fair to, according to, to what I've heard. We need to stand up for, for, for what we believe and especially people who comes with a good heart. We we do need people like that in our areas. And it's just hard soul and breaking which means we will have trillions won't do what this man does. We don't just read Mitchell's plane or Athlone. It's Chauberg, Reichepark, um, different areas. Durban, all over Western Cape even. So that just boys there, it don't just stop there. And if he don't feed, who will feed? Government don't feed, they can't do what he do. We know for a fact that there's been a lot of plots to try and take him out. But this all happened just after he had made the case against the Hawks. How does that? It just, nothing adds up. I mean, he's not out on bail, yet people for deeper cases are out on bail already. No case against him or charge the way we see, he hasn't even had an opportunity to make a statement. On the 3rd of May 2021, five days after their police chase, the three individuals including the man suspected of organizing Detective Kinnear's murder, Nafiz Madak, appeared in the Cape Town Magistrate's Court amid heavy security. He was wearing a blue suit and a black and yellow scarf. The South African police minister was also present in court that day, along with high-ranking members of his police service. Prior to the court proceedings getting underway, barbed wire was used to cordon off a section leading to the courtroom. 
a water cannon was on standby, and 30 heavily armed anti-gang unit and public order policing members secured the premises. Inside court, armed anti-gang unit members flanked magistrate Ronald Oliver and provided protection to the prosecution and the accused. During his court appearance, the state brought out a long list of charges against Smodak, including seven counts of attempted murder. It is however the cold-hearted murder of the Honorable Detective Charles Kinnear, which would go on and expose the terror, chaos, and pain that Nafiz Modak and his friends have brought to the people of the Western Cape for the past five to ten years. An early morning ambush. According to police, Pete Mahalik was shot twice in the head while dropping his two children at school. Those who knew him are stunned. A 50-year-old man was shot in his head and he was fatally wounded inside his vehicle by an unidentified suspect. So the witnesses that were around on the scene, they saw the suspect fleeing in a metallic silver or metallic gray BW polo and the victim's eight-year-old son sustained an injury and then he was rushed to hospital. Mahalik was known to move in Cape Town's high-profile circles, a celebrity lawyer who often took on suspected organized crime figures as clients in criminal cases. Investigators from the police's anti-gang unit were deployed to the scene and inference that the shooting could be connected to Mahalik's defense of underworld figures. 30th September 2018 the time is 7.26 a.m. in the morning. A black Mercedes-Benz SUV is captured by a nearby CCTV camera making its way up Thornhill Road, a quiet street which is situated in Greenpoint, an affluent suburb in the Western Cape. Now, inside the vehicle was a family of three. A 58-year-old father, named Pete Mihalik, who was seated in the driver's seat of the car. And also has two young children. Mihalik was on his way to drop his kids off at Redham High School, a prestigious private school just a few meters away. Driving behind a silver-gray VW Polo, the video depicts Mihalik coming to a stop at the intersection of Thornhill and Cavalcade Roads in order to drop his daughter off for school. As soon as she opens the door, a man wearing black pants and a red t-shirt is seen pointing a 9mm pistol at the right side of the SUV. The hitman shot Mihalik two times through his window. Seconds later, the hitman lowers his hand, places the gun in a bag, and then runs down Thornhill Road. Mihalik's 8-year-old son was shot once in the neck. Fortunately, he merely had surgery to remove the bullet from his jaw, when a parent nearby quickly rushed him to the hospital. The boy's father however was shot two times. Once to the side of his head, penetrating his skull. And also once in his jaw. Pete Mihalik's body, covered in a white sheet, was wheeled into a forensic pathology van, a few hours later. Mihalik's funeral, took place at the St. Mary's Catholic Cathedral, ten days after his assassination. There was a heavy police presence around the church, and at least eight private bodyguards were stationed inside. There were also judges and lawyers from all around the Western Cape who had come to pay their respect. There were at least three high-profile individuals who came to pay their respects at the funeral. Ralph Stanfield, Colin Boyson, and also Nafiz Madak. And this is two years before the assassination of Detective Charles Kinnear. Ralph Stanfield is alleged to be one of the current leaders of the 28th Numbers Gang, a ruthless criminal organization which is situated in the Cape Flats. The only reason we know him is because in July 2017, he was also involved in a drive-by shooting in Melrose Arch, in the city of Johannesburg, whereby he was shot over three times and still managed to drive himself to the hospital. As of 2023, Stanfield, his wife, along with his sister, are currently facing over 100 charges relating to a gun licensing racket involving corrupt Western Cape police officials. Colin Boyson is one of the alleged underworld bosses of the Western Cape. 
He is the brother of Jerome Donkey Boyson, the apparent leader of the Sexy Boys Gang, which is situated in Cape Town. At Pete Mihalik's funeral, Colin Boyson was out on bail. He had been arrested following the murder of Adrian Peterson, who died in a shootout during an argument with him, two months earlier. On the 14th of November 2018, 14 days after he was assassinated, Pete Mihalik was supposed to attend a case in the Western Cape High Court, which involved extortion and money laundering. You see, Pete Mihalik was not just any regular civilian. He was a lawyer, more specifically one of the best criminal defense lawyers in the country. He was known for taking on and defending individuals who were closely connected to the Western Cape Gang Underworld. The case that he was supposed to tend to on the 14th of November involved both Nafiz Madak and Colin Boyson. They were accused of extorting the Grand Cafe nightclub out of 90,000 rands in early 2018. The men face one count of intimidation and eight of extortion relating to the alleged takeover of security at the Grand Africa Cafe and Beach last year. The investigating officer, Charles Kinnear, today also said that Modak and Kunia would be charged in connection with the murder of a bouncer at Cubana in Greenpoint. He has testified that bail should be denied as both Modak and Kunia are flight risks and would likely evade trial. CCTV footage of this incident shows Madak wearing a black vest and a white shirt, leading a group of men into the venue that they had forcibly took over and allegedly extorted. The officer who was involved in investigating this case was none other than the Honorable Detective Charles Kinnear. Pete Mihalik, however, was supposed to be Madak's defense lawyer, as he had represented both Colin and Madak before. Although Charles Kinnear and Pete Mihalik used to be on opposite sides in court, it is said that they used to get along very well. It was during Madak's extortion case that rumors of high-ranking members within the South African Police Service working with notorious Western Cape gangs would start to spread around the country. With the November 2018 extortion and money laundering trial, it was the first time that the general public would hear the name Nafiz Modak, and it surely wouldn't be the last. Mr. Modak, Mr. Modak, any comment? I don't know much of a comment, just Mark Lufman should pay higher police for the next case. Thank you. How do you so feel about being acquitted now? All charges dropped. That was a true story all the time. How do you feel about the perception that you belong in there and the world? That's not true, but everyone is invited to the grand for lunch. Thank you. After Mihalik's public assassination in October 2018, Detective Charles Kinnear would be the one who was appointed to investigate his murder. This was one of the last cases that was being probed by the anti-gang unit member. Within two years of investigating Mihalik's death, Detective Charles Kinnear would also be assassinated outside his home in Cape Town in September 2020. However thanks to Kinnear's investigation, on the 10th of August 2023, three crash dummies, who were suspected of being involved in Mihalik's death, would be arrested, charged, and sentenced to life in prison. They were also given an extra 10 years, for the attempted murder of Mihalik's two innocent children. <laughs>